Hey everyone, welcome to Cooking Companion TV. I'm Jenna Edwards and this is a recipe demo of biscotti amarena y mandorl, or, or cherry and almond flour cookies. So give this video a thumbs up if you like it. If you couldn't tell by the name, these are Italian and Italian desserts, especially Northern Italian desserts, are the best desserts. I'm finding so many simply decadent recipes using basic fruits and less common ingredients like almond flour and corn flour for rustic and elegant goodies. You do need a specialty cherry, specifically cherries and syrup, and the American Maraschino cherries will not work here. I ordered these very Italian cherries from Amazon, but it's possible to find them in any Italian grocer, especially if your area has something like that. These are the type of cherries, you, cherries you'd find in an old fashioned cocktail. So let's get to it. These are easy, but labor intensive. And I can imagine it's one of those things that bring the family together around the kitchen table and like everyone pitches in, you know, like super Italian. The recipe I found calls for 300 grams of blanched and peeled sliced almonds, but I couldn't find that. So I just pulled out my almond flour because the peeled almonds get ground up anyway. We need to toast the almonds or almond flour in the oven for only five minutes, maybe less with the flour, at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit, just until they're slightly golden. Now, I skipped this part originally, but you should definitely do this. Once it's cool enough to handle, we'll stir in 220 grams of confectioner sugar or icing sugar as it's known in Europe, and you have the option of adding the zest of one lemon. I also didn't do this originally, but I think you should to give the cookie some depth. And then we need 85 grams of egg whites, which is about two and a half egg whites, depending on the size of your eggs. Anytime you only use the yolks of the egg, like for making pasta, you can freeze the whites for several months. And I feel like these cookies are meant to be made with pasta simply because they needed a way to use up the leftover egg whites from the pasta making. It makes sense, right? You'll also notice how I've kept everything on a baking scale and I tear the scale, which means I reset it to zero with everything still on it, so I can accurately weigh each added ingredient. Now for a vegan version, aquafaba would work really well here since there are so few ingredients. Troubleshooting the consistency will be super easy without compromising the end result. So let's begin to mix all of this with a wooden spoon or fork. And eventually you have to get your hands in there and you'll mix with your hands until the dough is soft, but not sticky. You will have to go by the feel of the dough to determine your next steps. So it should not be as sticky as mine obviously is. Which means we need to add more dry ingredients and here always add more almond flour rather than more sugar. So I'm sprinkling in a little more. The plan is to mix this in, and if I need to add more, then I can. This seems to be enough to make it soft, but not sticky. And now it needs to rest for about 20 minutes. And this is to let it absorb together and adhere. Now in the meantime, let's work on our cherries. So let's drain them and keep the syrup because I'm sure we can figure out a way to use that stuff and rinse the cherries gently. And then thoroughly dry the cherries. If they aren't dry, they won't stick to the dough. After 20 minutes of rest, let's get ready to make our cookies. We need everything very close because it's like a little assembly line. We also need a bowl of confectioner sugar, the powdered sugar. So here's the process. Sprinkle a pinch or two of powdered sugar in your hand, and then take a teaspoon to scoop out just a teaspoon of the dough. Place the dough in the hand with the sugar. This keeps it from sticking to your hand, and then use your free thumb on the other hand to punch out some space for the cherry. Then add the cherry and roll up the dough around it. If you want smooth balls, then roll it around in your palms. Otherwise, you can just pinch it with your fingers to make it a little jagged. I also like to roll a little more sugar on the cookies so they have a textured look and they aren't so bland looking. I think you could also roll them in more almond slices. So I'll let you watch a couple more demonstrations of this process. 
The dough is really easy to work with as long as I kept a little powdered sugar in my hands. And you can play around with how much or how little dough to wrap around the cherries. A heaping teaspoon versus a flat teaspoon makes a difference in the size of the balls and the thickness of the dough around the cherries. And this will be affected by the cooking time. If you have a thick crust, you may need to bake them a couple minutes longer. If you have thinner cookies, Keep a close eye on them. I don't think it really matters that much how thin or thick the crust is, so it's really just a preference for how you like your cherry cookies. So I didn't use all of my cherries. The recipe says this makes 40 cookies and I ended up with 55. I imagine you can make half a recipe and then freeze the remaining dough for another batch later. Because even though they're bite sized, 55 is still a lot of cookies. Regardless, you'll place them on a parchment lined baking sheet and bake them for only 10 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit just until there are cracks on the surface. Let them cool and serve. Now I originally experienced these when a friend of mine brought a tray of cookies from a Roman bakery, Cataldo al Forno, and I became a true believer in the Italian cookie. So again, you can leave them like this or sprinkle more powdered sugar on them or roll them in sliced almonds before baking. Now my cookies were a soft, creamy consistency with that tart cherry in the middle. Now because I didn't toast the flour in the beginning, I get a strong raw almond flavor in the aftertaste, which is why I so strongly recommend toasting the flour before you mix the dough. That is it for this recipe demo of Biscotti Amarana y Mandol. Get the ingredient list and the description below or at cookingcompaniontv.com slash cherry cookies and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And please subscribe to this channel for more demos just like this. I'm Jenna Edwards and thanks for watching.